what we typically see in the market right now is what we call DMS or driver monitoring system. This is typically a camera that is facing the driver directly, focusing on the eyes so that you can detect gaze, head direction, eye open and closure, blink rates. And we typically use that to detect drowsiness or distraction of the driver. So this is very specific to only the driver. What we're moving towards now is what we call CMS or OMS, cabin monitoring or occupant monitoring systems. So this is typically a camera that is mounted in the center of the vehicle and faces the entire cabin so it sees all the seats in the vehicle. And this has many applications. Typical use cases include counting people in the cabin, detecting which seats are occupied uh, and what is the person or child or object that is occupying the seat. Detecting activity of people, uh, their body posture for instance, what are they doing in the seat right now. Measuring uh, or detecting whether the seat belt is worn correctly or maybe incorrectly, which can also cause a safety hazard. Gesture classification and interaction with the vehicle is another use case. We want to be able to uh, enhance the infotainment and the entertainment of passengers also in the vehicle to spend their time more enjoyable. Right? Interacting with the vehicle, uh, maybe pointing at things and allowing that uh, the vehicle understands where the people are pointing at and interacting with the, uh, with the passengers. But also games. I can imagine driving a race car on the rear uh, passenger seat uh, by just uh, driving a virtual steering wheel and the camera is able to detect the joints and uh, can control the car uh, in a virtual display, for instance. So in order to do all of that, we need to heavily invest into machine learning capabilities and we do a lot of 3D computer vision. We work a lot with deep learning algorithms. We do classification, image segmentation, object detection, depth estimation, activity recognition. All of this is required to enable the use cases that I mentioned before. So we're doing all that from early research prototype to production ready solutions. We design the neural network architectures, perform architecture search, but then also port the models to an embedded platform. And that requires additional steps like quantization, there's post-training quantization, quantization-aware training that has to be applied, and all of that is part of our end-to-end -end pipeline. We need to make sure that whatever we deployed in the field in the product already can be updated over the air also without regression of the previous features. So we're working on shared feature backbones that can be extended with feature-specific heads that solve particular tasks without regression of previous tasks or other tasks. Version control of models is also very important. We typically run our models through different stages. Whenever an engineer deems the model valid for the next step, we run through different automated pipelines to run quantization, to run KPI tests, uh, and to run verification uh, on top of that. One of the key factors for successful machine learning development is to have the right ecosystem in place. That is data management, cloud-based training, uh, and everything that is necessary to ensure that you have no bias in your training data, balancing the data sets, right? generating insights from the data, finding corner cases and capturing additional data for those cases specifically. Adaptive, we have a lot of in-house knowledge that was built up over the last couple of years to support that machine learning development workflow. And this really helps us to gain traction and develop new features quickly.